So here's the deal. So I wake up and I roll out of bed and I start my normal morning routine and I pick up my phone. And one of the reasons why I picked up my phone is because our oldest child, our daughter Sawyer, who's 24 years old, is in the middle of a solo backpacking trip on the other side of the world. And this is something she's wanted to do for a long time. It's really well planned out. And of course, because I'm her mother, <laughs> because I worry, I am tracking her location. And we're all on WhatsApp. We're in a family group text. And right now she is in Australia and she had planned as part of her itinerary that she was going to go on a couple solo hikes. <laughs> Cue the worry. Okay. I got my 24 year old daughter backpack on her back in a country she's never been to. Obviously it's relatively safe, but that does not uh, prevent me from coming up with all kinds of fantasies in my mind about what could go wrong. And so I've been pretty good. I've been really good. You know, I, I have been able to just enjoy from afar and not become a stalker, but something happened that caused me to spiral this morning. She summited this mountain in Australia to see a sunrise two days ago, and I haven't heard from her. And I go to track her location, and I'm like, where is she? And it's sort of rainbow wheeling, so I can't quite see where she is. And I know she's okay because she posted something on social media but I woke up this morning and I immediately looked at my WhatsApp. There was no message from her in the family group chat. There was no message her, from her directly to me. I then went to Instagram. I looked in the DMs. There was no DM from her. And I started to panic. And what did my mind think? I'm almost embarrassed to tell you. Why don't you just step in my shoes for a minute? What do you think Mel Robbins was thinking knowing that her daughter had summited a mountain alone. It's like a five-mile hike up. She started at 4 o'clock in the morning to see the sunrise. We saw the photos of the sunrise. Haven't heard from her since. What do you think my mind is thinking right now? It's been 48 hours. She's on the other side of the world. Oh, you know, I'm not thinking, oh, I bet she met some friends and she's out having fun. Or maybe her phone died. Or you know what, Mel? Maybe she's so busy that she doesn't have time to talk to you because the whole point of her trip is not to keep you posted of her whereabouts. It's for her to go out and have this incredible experience and to grow and to discover and to be brave and to explore. That's not what my mind thought. Nope. You know what my mind thought? She's dead. She fell off the mountain after taking the uh, sunrise photo. The woman is dead. Then I thought, no, 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 maybe she got kidnapped. Then I thought, oh, no, she was sexually assaulted on the side of the trail. And somebody, I, I, this is disgusting, I know, but do not tell me that you don't do the same thing. That your mind goes dark. I'm talking gruesome, scary horror movie, dark, like in a nanosecond. And here's the thing. I know that this is a terrible thing to do. I know that this causes me pain. And I bet you do it too. I know you do, in fact, because I've seen the DMs that you write to me, whether it's you are worried about your money and you're constantly worried about something bad happening with your money or getting fired or forgetting about something for your kids. And that's where your brain is constantly settling. And here's what we're going to do today, because we're all guilty of this. There is so much research around the fact that worry is so painful in your life. Worry is a habit. This is a really, really bad spiral to get into. It causes you a lot of pain. It causes you a lot of stress. It can certainly bring on anxiety. And if you already struggle with a little bit of anxiety, it can make it a lot worse. It doesn't help with your confidence. And one out of three people, according to research, struggle with constant worrying. And so what I wanna share with you today is a six word sentence that I use all the time in these moments when I catch my mind spiraling. And it really helps. And it really helps me because it stops that freight train of bad and negative and catastrophic thoughts. And here's the six words. You ready? This is what I say to myself. What if it all works out? 
So as I'm standing this morning in my underwear, I don't even have a bra on this morning. And I've already visualized my daughter uh, falling to her death off of a cliff in the middle of nowhere in Australia. (laughs) I'm brushing my teeth and I'm starting to notice my anxiety rising. It's 6.15 in the morning here and I have inflicted self-torture on myself before I've had a glass of water or a cup of coffee. This is completely unnecessary and I catch myself and this is what I want to teach you to do because you need to start catching yourself. I think you and I can agree that we can't control anything that's happening outside of us, right? But we can certainly control our reaction to it. And so I'm standing there in my underwear. I'm visualizing my daughter's death or the fact that she's been kidnapped and abducted. And I notice the stress rise and I say to myself, Mel, what if it all works out? What if it all works out? I mean, you can't argue with that, right? What if it all works out? Because in this moment where you're worried about getting fired or you're worried about forgetting something for your kids or you're worried about what will happen if the people that you love the most are going to die before you can say goodbye. Or this one happens for me a lot. I'll be sitting on a plane and it's taking off and I suddenly spiral and think, if this plane crashes, I, 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 I'm not going to see my daughter's wedding. I'm not going to meet my grandkids. I'm not going to get to do all this stuff that I really want to do in my life. And in that moment where I'm in the negative, what if this, what if that, what if the other thing? And I feel the pain rising and I feel the stress rising and I feel the self-inflicted torture coming on. I simply drop in those six words. What if it all works out? And here's what happens. It stops the spiral. That's the first thing that happens. What if it all works out? You just hit the brakes on the locomotive of worry. The second thing that happens is because it's a question, what if it all works out? you actually pause for a second and consider it. And what you realize when you stop for a second and you pause and you consider, what if it all works out? Is you don't actually know what's going to happen, do you? You're just choosing to make yourself believe that something terrible has already happened. But the truth is, in this moment, you don't know. And so it is a fact a logical fact that it could all work out. And in fact, based on the research, this is kind of amazing. I want to, I want to throw some research at you. Um, let me find this. You can hear me flipping through my papers because there's a lot of really interesting stuff. There is a study at Penn State where they looked at chronic worrying. And the average person has three to four major worries a day. Okay. What if I get fired? What if I'm not happy? What if my marriage ends? Will I find love and have children? What if I don't make the money? What if this? What if that? What if the other thing? All these worries that every single one of us, you and me, we have at least three or four of them that cause us stress or make us feel some level of pain. According to this Penn State study, 91% of those worries are completely false. It's self-inflicted torture. And I think you and I both know that. And here's the other really kind of interesting thing. You know, the other 9% of the worries that do happen, the outcome is almost always way better than you expected, period. Okay. The outcome is way better than you expected about a third of the time. Uh, So what does this mean? This means that you going, what if it's a disaster? What if this happens? What if she's fallen off a cliff? What if I never hear from her again? What if she doesn't? What if it all works out? See, you don't know, do you? You don't know if you're getting fired. You don't know if you're going to run out of money. But you can rely on the research that 91% of the time it doesn't happen and a third of the 9% of the remaining, it's way better than you thought. And that leaves you with a 6% chance that something might happen. And here's how I look at this. If something bad happens, I will deal with it then. Why do I need to torture myself now? when I don't even know if something amazing is happening or something bad is happening. And so what if it all works out is a way for you to catch yourself because you and I inflict so much pain and it is pain. It's pain when you do this to yourself. 
it was painful to stand in the bathroom here in Salt Lake in my underwear brushing my teeth thinking about my daughter's death. And it's completely ridiculous. It's, it's not like, give me a break, Mel. Give me a freaking break. And I know all our fans right now in Australia and New Zealand are like, oh, she's fine. Like, that, 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 that is ridiculous, Mel. It is, it is so fabulous. People do this all the time. They hike that trail. It's wide. It's this. It's that. I know the mountain you're talking about because she went up for the sunrise. You're completely ridiculous. That's why you need this six-word sentence. What if it all works out? Because it will interrupt the spiral. And what we're going to talk about next is why it's important to interrupt the spiral. You know this based on common sense. Why go through life torturing yourself? Why allow your mind to dwell in worries about things that either haven't happened or problems that haven't resulted yet or situations that are beyond your control? Why do this? And I'm here to tell you, I don't want you to do this. And I want to bring in some spirituality real quick because there is this saying in Buddhism that I think is so beautiful and it's so relevant to what you and I are talking about right now. You ready? So in Buddhism, any time that you or I suffer from some kind of misfortune and the misfortune might just be that you haven't heard from somebody in a couple of days or it might just be that you got a bad annual review at work or it might just be that you suddenly got a bill or a diagnosis that scares the living daylights out of you, okay? Anytime that a human being suffers some kind of misfortune in life, there are two arrows that get fired. You ready? The first arrow hits you when the painful event occurs. So this is the arrow that gets fired at you, like right in your heart. And for me this morning, as small of an example of as, it, as it is, grabbing my phone, looking for my daughter's location, seeing a rainbow wheel instead of some sort of location at a hostel, thinking about the fact that I haven't heard from her since I saw the sunrise photo two days ago, that moment, ooh, was an arrow. Your arrow might be that somebody breaks up with you. It might be the number on the scale. It might be, again, that bill that just arrived and you're like, I don't have $1,000 to fix my car right now. It might be that you didn't get into the school you wanted to get into. It might be that um, you get, you start coughing and you're really worried about something going on because there's something that is a health diagnosis in your family. There is the first arrow. Boom. Hits, right? The second arrow that gets fired is your reaction to what just happened. It's the arrow that you fire at yourself based on what you think next. And when you start to understand that life is going to fire arrows at you all the time, the research shows you get at least three or four a day. That triggers you to worry. The worry, the anxiety, the catastrophizing, that is the second arrow. And it causes you so much pain. And I'm going to prove this to you based on some research studies that they've done about how anticipatory worry or being afraid of something or this kind of negative thinking lights up the pain pathways in your brain. And I love this visual of the two arrows in life, right? That anytime you suffer misfortune, boom, two arrows fly in the air. The first one is fired by life. It hits you right in the heart. And the second arrow is the arrow that you fire right into your forehead. It's your reaction. And that adds pain. And this is also a concept that has been studied and researched extensively in psychology. What psychologists and psychiatrists call this is having a primary and secondary emotional response. So your primary emotional response is your immediate reaction to having something bad happen or a fear of yours or some sort of expectation that you have. The secondary emotion that you feel, this is the thing that lingers is the emotions that you sit with in reaction to it. 
So examples of this might be that when somebody dies, you have a primary emotion of profound shock and sadness and despair. It's that just avalanche that hits you. But the secondary emotion is the grief that can last a long time. And what we know based on research is that you don't really have a lot of control on the primary emotion. But there are tremendous, there are a tremendous number of things that you can do in order to shorten the experience of the secondary emotion that you have. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about that second arrow, the pain you cause yourself. And we're talking about it specifically based on the pain that worrying and catastrophizing, assuming the worst, what that's doing to your health, to your mindset, to your nervous system, to your attitude, and to your ability to experience more joy and fulfillment in your life. And that's why I'm on a mission today to both stop myself from firing that second arrow at my forehead and interrupt it, grab it out of the air so that I can assume something really good is happening. I can assume that it's all going to work out and I can stop torturing myself with all this shit that I'm making up anyway. And I want you to do the exact same thing. I caught myself going down a rabbit hole. I started worrying about something, then the worries became even bigger. And so what I want to share with you today is a six word sentence that I use all the time 